Kids Comics. Silverhead Bronze Age Babe here, yakking about her comic book collection, and today talking about Wonder Woman Bronze Age bondage covers. Um, scattered around here, you'll see uh, my Lois Lane Bronze Age bondage covers. I did a video about that. Uh, several months ago, which by the way broke all records for my views. Um, apparently all you have to do on YouTube to garner a lot of views is uh, use the word bondage. So we'll see how, how this uh, <laughs> how this video does on the view count. Um, the thing, I have different reactions to Lois Lane bondage covers versus the, the Wonder Woman and number one it's because I really love Lois Lane. I've always loved Lois Lane and the fact that they have her in various bondage poses, um, it, it, I find it a little uh, funny because it was never part of her mythos. Um, so it was more, it seemed to me, more of a reaction to uh, second wave feminism in the late 60s and early 70s than it was about trying to dig deeper into uh, the character's uh, uh, background. Um, now, not the same cannot be said about Wonder Woman. Um, you know, she, uh, the lasso of truth, uh, was part of her from the jump. And so in the early, in the Golden Age books, uh, there was a lot of binding <laughs> going on. And, but my understanding is that I, I, had, I don't read a lot of those books. So, um, but the few that I have read, seems to me that Wonder Woman is the one in charge and uh, deciding who gets bound up and why. Um, but in the Bronze Age, things, ch things changed. Um, going through my collection, I was surprised at how many uh, covers feature Wonder Woman herself in bondage. Uh, this is one that uh, is from the Diana Prince era, where she's no longer the um, costumed uh, hero. Uh, she is more like a Diana Rigg Avengers, you know, or whatever those people were called, um, spy person. So, um, but, you know, never look an opportunity, never waste an opportunity. Um, okay, this isn't... <laughs> what could be more... Um, uh, a sign of bondage than getting married. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I kid. Um, but uh, I'm gonna say, you know, I Wonder Woman number one has never been a huge favorite of mine. Uh, I I like her, but uh, the the character just kind of kept changing over the decades, and it seems like the guys at DC had no idea what to do with her, so I kind of gave up. Um, this cover is, you know, and I don't have a lot of patience, I guess. I mean, the truth is, I don't, I have some of these bondage covers. Like, I bought this specifically because, well, it's, I should probably have that in the collection. But, um, you know, it's not, uh, I don't, I don't think much of it. Because, uh, first of all, that image is nowhere in the story. So, why are we having it on the cover? Gee, I wonder why. Um this book we talked about wonder woman isn't in bondage but her friend is um and then when they gave her her costume back uh that was good but they still wanted to tie her up to th to things i mean okay um and she and nubia are tied together i actually i love the character of nubia and uh, I wonder, I don't know if she's going to make it into the next Wonder Woman movie, um, but she should. She's a great character, and I look forward to, to seeing Nubia in the films. Um, so this run from the early and mid-70s, you know, they just, if there was a rope around, we need to tie a woman up with it. And yeah, I get it. It's like, it's an interesting depiction of uh, trouble and danger and how will we get out of it, but um, I don't know, the frequency with which it was employed for Wonder Woman um, is, uh, it's kind of stunning. It was stunning to me when I actually looked through my collection and saw how many uh, there were, and I, it, interestingly enough, and 
<laughs> Yet another one. Um, the uh, letters to the editor column, uh, only once did I see, so, and it was in relation to this particular story. And I did a, a video on that called uh, Brainwashed or, you know, um, Women's Livers from Space. Uh, it's <laughs> Marty Pasco wrote that, and he really didn't have fond things to say about the women's movement. Uh, but the, the reader response to that story was uniformly good. Uh, people liked it and thought it was intriguing, except for a woman who wrote in, I would like to register my disgust. Uh, with Wonder Woman 219, the cover features the Amazon in a compromising pose tied by her own magic rope and proclaiming to a number of armed men, I've made myself helpless, now kill me. This is an invitation to any male sexist to buy the issue. What is worse, inside the issue, angry feminists erupt against, erupt against innocent males when their tennis star disappears and there's constant warring between the sexes with Wonder Woman as the chief protagonist. What the world needs is reconciliation between the sexes and a basis for new understanding and growth. Wonder Woman 219 offers further stereotyping and negative incentives. I don't think any conscientious female or male would approve of what you've created in World of Enslaved Women, name withheld from Kansas City, Missouri. Bob Rosakis, the uh, uh, editor, responded, Them's powerful words from someone who doesn't sign a name, words which will no doubt launch a barrage of mail towards the desk of Bob Rosakis. Um, you know, it's not like she doesn't bring up a good point. And it's also, since DC Comics uh, would print where you live, uh, it's not out of the realm of possibility to think someone who uh, takes issue with a comic book and writes in to tell the editors what she thinks about it might want to have her name withheld um, so that she isn't on the receiving end of who knows, phone calls and mail and uh, whatever uh, to her house, even in 1970, what is it? Even in 1975 and 76. So, so anyway, the world of Wonder Woman and uh, bondage, it's, uh, it's an industri interesting period in the character's history and um, an interesting part of my collection. Thanks so much for stopping by and I'll see you next time.